Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we're in a place called Megaland where you'll be searching for treasures to build a booming business. Now you'll be doing this by pressing your luck to gain unique sets of treasures that you can then use to build new buildings that give you additional benefits. But you'll have to be careful because if you go too far, you'll lose it all. You're trying to be the richest player by having the most coins at the end of the game. Mega Land is for 2-5 to five players, ages 8 and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play and is published by Red Raven Games. Now it's coming to the market on July 30th as an exclusive for Target in North America, but it will be available through standard distribution internationally. Let me show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, each player gets to pick one of the five characters of their choice. In addition to your character, everyone's going to get their own player card, they're going to get four hearts, and the last player to have played a video game will get the first player token. The object of the game is to have the most coins at the end of the round when at least one player has 20. In order to get those coins, you'll be trying to run the level multiple times to gather different unique treasures. As this happens though, some monsters might come out that might injure you. And you're trying to hang on running through the level as many times as you can because you're going to be gathering different treasures which you'll use to buy buildings which will help you with abilities and gain the coins you need to win the game. But if you press your luck too much and you get injured too many times, well, all the treasures you had gotten that round have gone away. The game is played over multiple rounds until any one player has 20 coins, and each round goes through three phases. The first phase is to run the level, and this happens simultaneously. At the beginning of this phase, each player is going to place their character on the level tile here. And they'll each draw one of these treasure cards and place it face up above their player board. And each player will place all the treasures gained for this round above their player card. This means that they're the treasures that they might come home with if they don't press their luck too much. Now there's six different unique treasures in the game and the number corresponds with how many of them there are in the game. So the gear is the most rare and the carrots are the least rare. Now once each player has drawn their treasure card, we're going to flip this level card here and it's going to show us what happens. In this case, it's a monster and it will do one damage. So each player will take one of their hearts and move it from the heart side to the injury side, meaning we have three hearts left. Now this also shows you the distribution of the cards there. Where we just saw one that has one, there's three cards that do one damage, three that do none, two that do two, one that does three, and one that just gives you a random treasure. Now we're still in the first phase, the run the level phase, and each player will simultaneously decide whether they want to stay in the level by keeping their character here and pressing their luck. If so, they would just draw another treasure card and they would place it above their player card like that, adding to the treasures that they might be able to get this round. Or you could decide if you think it's too risky, you could return home by pulling your character off the level tile. You would not draw a new treasure card, and you would take all treasures that you had gotten that round, and now they go below here, which you'll be able to use at the end of this round to be able to buy buildings. But in this case, let's say we pressed our luck, so this stayed up here. We stayed in the level and we actually had gotten a second treasure, and it's time to see what happened. So we'll find out the encounter here, and it is, wow, two damage. Everyone takes it. So in this case, we take two of our hearts, move it to the injury side. Now, if at any point in time you have no more hearts over here, you are known to have fallen. If that happens, you'd remove all of these treasures that were on top of your player card, and you put them in a discard pile, and you would just return home. But in this case, we have one heart left, and we have two treasures. And phase one will continue with each player deciding to stay and take a treasure or to return home. This will continue until all players have either returned home on their own or because they had fallen. And since we returned home with these two treasures, we're able to put them down here, adding to any we may have had here from previous rounds, and we're able to spend these different treasures. And once phase one's over, you go to the buy phase, which is the second phase of a round. The player with the first player token will get to buy first, and things will go clockwise. When it's your turn to buy, you can spend as many of the unique treasures that you'd like in order to buy any of the buildings that are still here. Now, each of those buildings costs a certain amount of unique treasures, meaning different ones. So in this case, I have two treasures that I can spend. However, if I just had two of the same, then I could only spend one of these and buy a one building, but I could actually spend both of these to buy two one-cost buildings. 
but in reality I actually have two, so let's look at the options. Now the cost of the buildings in the upper left, and again this is the amount of unique treasures. Now these cards on the top all have stars. These ones are in every game, and in the pile are multiple copies of the same card. Where down here there's actually seven different types of buildings, and there's a total of 17 of them that you can use in the game. Only seven of them are used each game, which gives us a lot of replayability. So here I could buy any one of the two buildings or two of the one buildings, but I don't have to spend my treasures. We'll get to more of that in just a moment. So let's say I buy this one and this one. I would discard those two single treasures to the discard pile and I'd place these two buildings in front of me. So these are the two treasures I would have spent and this would immediately just get me one coin and this is a one-time thing. And then this one says, if I fall, you can return with one of your treasures because normally if you fall and you're forced to come back, if you get injured all the way, this would essentially get discarded. But with this card, the Herb Hut, I'm able to, even if I do fall, keep one of my treasures. Now this board is also placed near the middle of the table as well. And this tells you that you can use matching treasures. As we saw, you have to use unique ones when buying buildings, but if you have a bunch of matching ones, you can use those to upgrade how many hearts you have. So we could discard two of the same matching treasures in this case to get a fifth heart. These would go to the discard pile, and we now would gain a fifth heart that we can use for all the rounds remaining in the game. After everyone's had a chance to buy in clockwise order, we go to the third phase of each round called the night phase, where first of all, this first player token will pass to the next player to the left clockwise, and then you must discard any treasures that are underneath your play card. However, you can keep one treasure for each building you own, you store it in those buildings. So in this case, I can actually store two of the treasures, so I can just keep this one here. Then any buildings you own that have a moon symbol, they activate at night. This would get you three coins if you had the endless mine, and that means every round in the third phase and the night phase, you'd get three coins. That sounds great, but it is expensive. You need five unique treasures in order to buy that card. Then everyone would reset all of their hearts so they're all on the left side. And since I bought that other one, I have a fifth heart there. You'd then take the level deck, take all the cards that were used last round and shuffle them in to create one full deck again to run the level in. And at this point, if any player has 20 or more coins, whoever has the most coins is the winner. Otherwise you go back to phase one, which is running the level. So now you know how the game works. Let's look at some of the other cards. Let's look at some of these other starter cards that are used in every game. The cafe immediately gets you two coins one time when you buy it. The arcade gets you three coins when you buy it, but you'll get two at the end of the buy phase if you have the fewest coins of all the players. The Bazaar of Oddities gets you four coins right away, and one if you return home with at least five treasures. The Hotel gets you five coins right away, and two anytime you buy a heart. In the Temple of Zaz, you get seven coins right away, and two more when you meet the Red Serpent. Now the Red Serpent is one of the cards in that level deck and it is the only one that has the three damage. So if you had this temple, when you meet the Red Serpent, you still get two coins, pretty cool. Now let's look at some of the other cards that were used in this specific game. The Gym, you get a coin right away and two jump tokens. Now with these jump tokens, right before the card is flipped, assuming you're staying to run the level, you can spend one of these and if the card that's there has this jump, meaning you can jump over that monster, then you do not take the damage. But as you know, that there are some monsters in here that fly, which means you cannot jump over them, and you'd still take the damage and lose that jump token. The hospital gives you two coins each time the player to your left or right pushes their luck too much and falls. The smithy gives you three coins anytime you buy a four or five cost building. Speaking of four cost buildings, the root market gives you four coins and once per round you may use one carrot as any other treasure, which is cool because the carrot treasures are the ones that you'll see the most throughout the game. The endless mine uh, gives you three coins at the night phase as we showed earlier and the arena gets you six coins and two of those jump tokens. And keep in mind, these cards here were selected and these are only seven of the 17 different ones in the game, giving this game great replayability. And the game has an amazing insert for the box. Underneath this foam that stays here are all the different types of cards that are organized. All the starter cards are here organized. All the pieces here with this great insert that comes out. You can put this near the uh, cards themselves so that they actually have something to pull them from. And then under here are some of the other components. It's a great insert. Well, there you have Megaland. And as I've shown in the overview, it's a family style game with amazing artwork, a press your luck mechanism, and tons of replayability by having many different buildings to select from. So each game has a different feel. Now again, it's coming to the market on July 30th, 
2018 as an exclusive for Target in North America with a retail price of $24.99. It also includes a hidden Easter egg for another game by Red Raven Games titled Above and Below. Now, it's also available through standard distribution internationally. Now, this has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.